Hydrophobic interaction chromatography. What is it? How does it work? And why is it useful? Hydrophobic interactions describe the relationship between water and hydrophobes. In other words, molecules which barely or outright refuse to dissolve in water. For our purposes, the old adage, like attracts like, is very relevant here. Basically, hydrophobes abhor water and will band together in order to defend themselves against it. This is of course a simplified explanation, not exactly true to how it works in reality, but the same effect occurs in reality as well. If you are interested in the exact reason why this happened, just look for the hydrophobic effect and you'll find it. This interaction is utilized in hydrophobic interaction chromatography or HIC. I'll just refer to it as HIC to save time. Hydrophobic interaction chromatography separates molecules based on their level of hydrophobicity, or in other words, based on how much they hate water. HIC utilizes a reversible interaction between the proteins and the hydrophobic ligand on the HIC racin. This HIC racin is a bead with a hydrophobic surface, which therefore attracts hydrophobic proteins. The interaction between the hydrophobic proteins and the high racins is largely dependent on the salt concentration of the buffer. A higher salt concentration enhances the interaction while a lower salt concentration weakens the interaction. This is because the salt buffer reduces the solvation dissolution of sample solutes and as solvation decreases the hydrophobic regions that become exposed are adsorbed by the media. The more hydrophobic the molecule, the less salt is needed to promote binding. The salt concentration in the buffer can then gradually be decreased in order to separate our proteins based on how hydrophobic they are. As such, the protein with the lowest degree of hydrophobicity is eluted first, since it is not as attracted as the ones that are more hydrophobic. The workflow is very typical for column chromatography, but with the important difference that we gradually decrease the salt concentration in order to separate the proteins from one another. The column contains high racins, which are also hydrophobic, therefore attracting and slowing down the proteins based on their level of hydrophobicity. The separation is carried out in five main steps. First, the sample is added to the column. Second, proteins collect at the top. Thirdly, proteins begin to move through the column, pulled by gravity, but they start separating based on how much they are attracted to the high racins, which again is dependent on their level of hydrophobicity. Fourth, we gradually change the salt concentration, ensuring that only the most water-hating hydrophobic proteins stick, and eventually they also have to give up and get eluted along with the rest of the proteins. Fifth, during this changing salt concentration we can start collecting our proteins from the least hydrophobic to the most hydrophobic. Hydrophobic interaction chromatography can be used for the purpose of capturing a protein of interest. Hike can also be used for the intermediate step as well as the final polishing step in protein purification. It is a useful separation technique for purifying proteins while maintaining biological activity due to the use of conditions and matrices that operate under less denaturing or you can also think of it as less harmful conditions. In case you want to learn more about column chromatography, check out one of these three videos where I cover ion exchange chromatography or IEX, size exclusion chromatography or SEC, uh, and finally also affinity chromatography. Until next time.